Hello and welcome to this overview repair tutorial and today we're going to be looking at the Pioneer A10. So this amplifier was released about 2011-2012 time period and sold in very very good numbers and overall um, not bad performance you know uh, for an amplifier it sort of retails in the UK sort of around at that time period probably about £260 sort of category and then for functional specifications the amplifier will provide 30 watts um, per channel output into 8 arms or it can also deliver up to 50 watts into a 4 arm load and then total harmonic distortion at 1 kilo would be less than 0.01% and this is common for these types of amplifiers um, frequency response um, minus 1 dB so that's from 5 Hz up to 100 kilohertz and power consumption is overall about 135 watts in total and for the amp it supported a moving magnet input so if you have a record player you can connect it directly to the amp you don't require an external equalizer stroke uh, preamplifier and then for the other inputs you have the ability to have the network connection auxiliary CD tuner and also a recorder as well and for dimensions you're looking at 435 millimeters height 128 millimeters uh, wide with a depth overall of 360 and the amp comes in uh, at just above 6.7 kilograms now this amplifier uh, really didn't have any of the three common issues so the three common issues that you have are either failure of the low voltage regulators which are used for the plus or minus 15 volt supply the failure of the toroidal transformer primary or failure of the microprocessor which is located on the front stroke tone board and that receives 3.3 volts from the startup circuit towards the back left where you see the power input so first part of the fault finding get the amp up on the bench and then connect your negative lead of your multimeter to the rear uh, negative speaker terminals it doesn't matter which one you you select they're all common and then the first thing is to just check the outputs of the plus or minus 15 volt regulators because what you want to see here is is there an issue one of the common faults and you know what you have to do is you have to reset the protection circuit so from the front press the direct mode and the speaker b selection keep them pressed and then the power led will stop flashing red and then it will come on blue and it will initialize the amp clear in protection mode and it should then energize the startup relay so you'll hear that engage and that provides power to the toroidal and the amplifier had plus or minus 15 volts on the low voltage power supply regulators no issue and it also confirmed to me then of course that i had the uh, toroidal transformer primary was not the issue and the microprocessor was working because it was operating the startup power supply so all good so what else could be causing the problem well the next thing that i need to test and what we did check here was to verify what was going on with the left and right channel output so each channel has a speaker protection relay and the output then from the channel is then connected and you'll see that it goes through an inductor for each one of the channels and then it will then connect directly then via the speaker protection relay so very easy what I'm doing here is I just simply measure on one side of the uh, small induction coil and as long as I'm on the output of each one of the channels which is just before it connects to the common switching terminal on the re on the speaker protection relay I can then measure the DC offset and that's what I'm really interested to verify here do I have a DC offset problem on either of the channels so I go in and I measure the right channel and again I'll reset it and then after a couple of seconds it resets and then it then trips back to protection mode but I did verify that the DC offset on the right channel was about 8 millivolts or thereabouts so no issue there that's good and then I prefer the same test so now resetting but now measuring on the left channel and I saw as soon as the power relay energized it was probably about 1.3 1.4 volts off it went it was going high and that is more than enough to trigger the protection circuit and then as soon as protection comes in it de-energizes and so i think okay right let me just make a couple more tests so what i then do is i reset again but instead of measuring the dc offset what i'm interested now to do is to measure the bias voltage on the output 
of the transistor. So these are the audio output transistors for the left and right channel. As soon as I go into the base, which should be normally just above 0.6 on the MPN, and then about minus 0.6 or thereabouts on the PMP, what I find is that the voltage is high, very high. So effectively the transistors are being uh, overdriven. So that's a, that's a concern, of course. But the difficulty here, because the protection system trips in, and this is very common where you have these startup balls, I don't have the ability then to make really any more tests apart from just keep on resetting it and try and you know, make a couple of measurements. But the modern day service manuals don't give you any sort of insight. They give you a schematic and an exploded parts diagram. But what it doesn't give me is any voltages at different test points. And I often get questions related to this. You know, when you're in that situation, really, what can you do? Well, what you have to do is you kind of go really back to basics. Now, you know that you have a right channel, which is working correctly, but then I have a faulty channel. And I know from experience, when I'm kind of seeing things which are sort of being over-biased, there may well be, for example, a resistor which has gone high in, the, in, in circuit, or it could be one of the semiconductors, one of the transistors, or it may even be a capacitor in there. So you can see in the video, what I've done is I removed the amplifier circuit board from the chassis, and it's just sitting on the top of the workbench, and then I'm able then to work on it. And that's very, very common. Now, what I can see is there was no excess current being drawn, and there are no burnt out components on there. So I'm not really looking maybe for a short circuit component. It's probably a component that has failed, either resistor gone high, as I said, or one of the other components. So I have to take a systematic approach. But remember, because you've got the working right channel, I can use that as a reference. So the first thing that I do is I'm using my multimeter and I'm just measuring across each one of the resistors in the output circuit for the for the right channel and then comparing it with the left and everything is is matching up correctly and then what i then find is a couple of the resistors just on the output stage they're reading about eight kilo ohms lower than what they should so that's bringing my attention then you know what's causing that you know for sure i can't see any burnt out resistors so i'm simply making that measurement and then that check then and in some cases you may need to lift one end of the resistor that you're measuring and as I was going through the fault finding here I was lifting a couple of the ends of the resistors because you know circuit wise they were in parallel uh, with other components and they all tested good so no 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 issue there so then I'm going to the next level I'm thinking okay is there maybe one of the driver transistors or pre-driver transistors which is causing an issue because it's gone leaky uh, electrically or the, the, there's something amiss there so again I just remove those from the circuit and then I then test them through and no issue found and then the only thing that then remains is to test the capacitors now I again provide an insight I know from experience that the ceramic disc capacitors which are fitted in many amplifiers the dielectric or the insulating material can, can start to electrically break down, so it becomes leaky. And you can see from the video here that exactly what I've just described was the issue. So what you have is, and it's shown, you have a C329, which is 330 picofarads, and that capacitor is connected between the base and the collector of the transistor, Q315 and this is in the output stage of the amp and you can see that. So the dielectric had broken down and this is the the thing about having you know good test equipment in the workshop and I do appreciate if you've you know you sort of undertaken for the first time or maybe you only repair a few amplifiers you may not justify you you buying you know test equipment but these sort of LCR type testers and capacitance testers were really have come down in price, not, not expensive anymore. And you can see the peak electronic device here. And there's that 330, um, three, sorry, 330 picofarad capacitor there on the tester. And it's no longer a capacitor. You can see that it's measuring it as a series resistor or a resistor of 280.1 ohms. So straight away that is confirming that that's, that's the problem there. And I'll show it on the schematic so you can see electronically where it is and which transistor it's connected to. And these sort of components are also used for stability within the output stages as well. So simple matter then 
of fitting a brand new uh, 330 picofarad capacitor and as soon as that was done before I install the board back into the amp chassis the next thing that I do is do that resistance check again right so I just make the measurement between the right channel and then the left channel across the resistors which were about 8k low and bang on point exactly the same now matching on the right channel so I know that that was the cause of the issue and then it's a case of reinstalling the amplifier board onto the chassis um, and there's something else that I, I need to point out to you as well and this isn't just for the Pioneer amplifier that you see right this can be linked to also uh, particularly uh, Marantz amplifiers use this type of arrangement so when you look at the rear of the amp what you'll see is that there are fixing screws for the speaker terminals no surprise there but on the back plate it's not covered with paint there's it's it's just bare metal and when you look at the rear of the speaker terminal you'll find that there's a grounding pin so when you put in the lot or the securing screw it screws directly into the grounding pin and then it then uses the back of the amplifier metal plate as a common ground point and this is very common right so when you see that don't just assume oh you know it, it's just how it is it, it has an electronic or electrical purpose and for people who've repaired um, Marantz amplifiers you've probably seen this and then the worst case and I've done this on a lot of the previous videos which I've put up when I do a technical write-up I just advise you under no circumstances power up the amplifier without the back plate fitted and these screws in there because it's a common ground point that connects other parts of the circuit and if you do it it will destroy the outputs so here what I don't do is I don't power up the amplifier with the, uh, the amp board in, onto the chassis without the back panel connected I'll make sure that those grounding screws are fitted and then also the screws are then fitted to the to the, the main chassis so we have the common grounding point and that's really really important to do that I know when people undertake amplifier repairs you know from from the beginning um this is probably not something that you're aware of you for sure you know it doesn't sort of uh, describe that in the service manual and there's always an assumption that the engineer you know maybe has been trained by pioneer or by Marantz and they've been you know told during the training hey you know this is an important point to remember before you you test it it assumes that the back panel is already fitted and then you're then doing retest but this isn't like some of the Marantz amplifiers where you have a service plate on the bottom and you could work on it not here you have to remove the complete board so a rather interesting repair what I would say is it's not common what you've seen here but it is one of those repairs where if it's not one of the major common issues that you see it can take you you know some time to to track down the fault so um, you know th this probably took probably an hour and a half you know from sort of start off so quite a bit of time to get into there and I've said this before on other repair tutorials you know you can't kind of fast track this you've just got to take a systematic approach you know just work your way through testing the components and then trust me eventually you will find the the issue and um, on what's causing the problem so once the board was installed amplifier was reset um, what I did also do as well is I was just checking on the um, bias for the output transistors and for some reason this amplifier was running a lot higher than what it should it should be 10 millivolts when you go across the test points and this amplifier was sort of ticking around about 26 millivolts right so that's way too warm uh, in terms of output you know you're overdriving the output so just a case then of just pulling that back down to 10 millivolts on either channel and the amplifiers then running you know with no loads that's the correct quiescent current or bias uh, current that's flowing through the outputs and then a full operational test after that then all right so that brings us to the end of this repair tutorial so I thank you again for listening and if you have any questions by all means email audio amplifier servicing at aol.com I'm more than happy to provide uh, any insight or to uh, answer anything that you may need to know further. Alright so thanks again and take care until the next time bye bye.